Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the 27th World Economic Forum on Africa. I'm delighted to be joined by Angel Adelaja. Uh, she is from uh, Fresh Direct, founder, I'm correct in saying? Yes, yes. Um, and one of the winners of uh, the World Economic Forum search for Africa's top uh, female uh, tech innovators. Um, Angel, you run a really interesting company. Can you tell us about it? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so Fresh Direct Nigeria is an urban farming company. We started as just a regular farm. Um, we found it very challenging, like other African, especially Nigerian farmers, to make a nice uh, revenue, um, a nice profit on the business that we were doing. Um, through the challenges, we decided we wanted to innovate and we started to create our own technologies so that we could farm in urban spaces rather than dealing with the bad roads, dealing with in no um, you know, storage facilities or, and dealing with the fact that um, with the distance and not so much land, it was very, very difficult for us to really make good margins. Um, so we started urban farming. We did it in a shipping container <laughs> okay. and we kitted the shipping container with a hydroponic system and we just started growing and from one container it, four months later we were able to use the revenue from that to do a second container um, after that um, we were able to uh, now we have um, 10 containers that we're putting online and uh, it's been amazing because we've been able to bring young people on board um, all of my staff they don't have secondary school they have either secondary school or below um, and the most only one has had agricultural experience, but her experience has been in traditional farming. So with Fresh Direct, we're getting people who have never had an experience in agriculture an easier way to get into it. We're giving unemployed youth an opportunity to have jobs, and also we're doing it in a fun way. Um, yeah, our former yeah. Minister of Agriculture, who is now the President of um, African Development Bank, he talked about agriculture being sexy. And so the whole goal for us is to make sure that someone like me with my nails and my hair, I can farm, but also someone like my staff who may have either had the only other opportunity to just be a domestic help or a, a, a day laborer can actually do meaningful work in agriculture, get great pay, and still feel confident and comfortable with themselves. So, so you started yeah. out with a with a with a normal a normal farm that yes, was like a we fifteen did. acre farm or something. We, um, we it was three hundred uh, hectares, but we were only on twelve of that and then we okay. put 10 greenhouses on there. I sunk a lot of capital into it and for me, the rest of it was just trees. So the cost of clearing the land would have been exorbitant and I don't even condone that because at the end of the day when you're land clearing, you're displacing the forest. I mean, we had so many pygmy elephants and other things like that in Nigeria that we don't have anymore because of deforestation. Um, and then on top of that, it was three hours from my market. So it was three hours away from Lagos. So the biggest issue with that was by the time you get your perishable products to Lagos, you number one have to agree to whatever, you have to pay for the transport. You can lose some of your products on the way. And then when you get there, if they don't like certain things, they won't buy. So they pick through what you have. Yeah. They'll pick the ones that are good. And then the ones that are not so great to their standards, they you can't really take it back with you. So this See. was so this was the challenge you had with I guess a traditional, traditional conventional farm. Yes, yes. And then you and so then you had the idea of shipping containers. Yes. And so, and gr and and basically <laughs> growing all of your vegetables in shipping containers. Yes. What happened was um, we so even the land that I have in Oshun State is a 15 year long lease because I couldn't even find find land that I could buy. And so if I who is I guess a privileged youth have stumbling blocks in agriculture. Think about all the other youth that they're telling to get into agriculture. So um, we had started greenhouse farming in Oshu, and we were like, okay, we can't greenhouse in an urban city because in Lagos, the space is very space tight is limited, and yeah. very expensive. So we started thinking, okay, how can we, because we're doing hydroponic farming by then, how can we make this meaningful? Sorry, what's, hi uh, what's okay. hydroponic? Just, hydroponic just farming hydroponic is farming? growing plants in nutrient-filled water. Okay, so no so, soil. No soil, okay. yes. And so we do it in an organic way. So we do aquaponics, which is when you add fish to okay. the mix, and it's an ecosystem. Um, we also use compost tea and other organic um, ingredients to feed the, the, the plants. You know, So the beauty about this was that we stack our containers up to five stories high. And these are, these are sort of like um, the, 20 the, the foot classic 20-foot shipping, container shipping containers. They can yeah. fit one car. You can put one car in it and ship it to China, or vice versa. <laughs> Okay, and, yes. and so, you, you, so you stack five on top of each other. How much, um, I think I, I, saw, um, uh, I saw a, because you had a, you had a video on our, on, each, on our website. It's yes, one each container, of the containers yeah. can do about 4,000 heads. Before, when we first started our design, it could do 3,000 
um, plants per cycle. Okay. And then we're doing products that take about anywhere from seven days to one month. So we're doing microgreens, we're doing um, endives and arugula and red oak lettuce and all of the fancier vegetables okay. because our focus really isn't to compete with rural farming. Our focus is to kind of take advantage of the fact that most of our restaurants, hotels, um, they're importing these vegetables on a weekly basis. They fly them in. So if they can afford to fly them in, then I can have a premium price on these products and still beat that price and, and provide fresh veggies to these people. So, so we have um, uh, some restaurants. Um, we just got a hotel chain on board and we have a grocery store in Abuja that we supply to. So for our containers, they take off everything. And the good thing about corporate customers is that they're consistent. So I know every Tuesday and Friday we do our harvest and within 15 minutes of us finishing the harvest and washing, it gets to our customers. So, so it's, it's very efficient. So it's efficient in terms of space. How much but if you just one container, how much space 14, on the ground? 14 square meters. So not no, up but to how the much size space would, would the equivalent be if you were farming about, traditionally? Uh, about a football field and a half. Yeah. So one shipping container equals a, a football a, field a, a and a half? A soccer field and a half, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and that's, uh, that's an incredible it's reduction a lot, and that's space. every month. So, <laughs> so you now stack them on yeah. top, and then that just because you take that same 14 square meters, and then you're now reducing you're now increasing and multiplying how much that small piece of land is producing. And I think one of the biggest things for Nigerian farmers is that even when we do traditional agriculture, we're not meeting up to the basic demand of the land. So for example, we have 200 million people, but when I was doing tomatoes, um, the tomatoes that we planted, in general, they say 50% of your product is lost before harvest and another 20%, 25% is lost from farm to market. So you're left with just 25% of your product reaching your customer. That's a big loss for a farmer to take. That's huge. You know? And so that 50% that you lose initially is from poor, poor climate or poor, poor soil or you know, you just don't have the tools to be able to compete effectively on that large scale. And, you know, for someone like me, I'm young, I don't own land. So if I don't own land, I can't get a loan from a bank in Nigeria because banks in Nigeria re require landed property as a collateral. So it's a catch-22 situation because first, I need to be rich before I can get a loan rather than vice versa. And some of the microfinance banks that provide smaller funds, they can provide you just enough for the inputs that you need for that season because the amounts are smaller, but it doesn't give you the access to, let's say you need a tractor or let's say you need something else. It doesn't really you know, add up. So, and then also the interest rates um, are anywhere from, for agric, if you go through CBN, which is a long process, it's 11%. But if you go through the commercial banks, it's 26, 25%. You, you make all of this sound incredibly straight, straightforward, like how you, how you did it. I'm sure it, no, I'm sure it, was it wasn't. it was stressful because <laughs> every failure, we ended up having to pivot and change the company. So, for example, um, the fuel prices went up from 87 naira per liter to over 200 to 300 naira per liter in the span of just weeks, and it stayed up. And th that affects your transport price. So everything you thought you would make, you don't, you know. And then you also use generate. We have poor electrical supply, electricity. So you, you, you end up having issues with generators. So with what we're doing now, the money I put into my farm, I'm still trying to make it back. But the money that I put into the urban farm, I made it back within nine months. And that includes uh, money from grants that we put in and stuff like that. So if you take away the grant money and stuff, we made our money back within, um, within six months. So you've, so you've had to innovate on financing, on power generation, around land, own, land ownership, on, yep. on the efficiency of, of, of actually delivering the product. Yes, yes. Everything has been just a response to the challenges that we have. And the beauty is like now I have landlords um, because even in the urban farm we're renting. But the beauty of that is that in, in Abuja and in Lagos you have a lot of empty plots of land. The owner may not be able to afford doing the house up. But because everything that we have is modular, you know, I can be farming here today and tomorrow, if you want me to leave, I can go. So what I did was I did a five year lease with, an, with um, my landlord in Abuja. And so we were able to um, get him to lock into that. In the beginning, we did just one year. And I was very nervous because I was like, okay, after this year, I'll have to look for another um, space. But he saw what we were doing and he was just shocked, you know, and we supply him like vegetables as well. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's so part happy. of the perks of being <laughs> a landlord, but he's been very, very 
supportive. And he then, after seeing it, because if, of course for Africans, seeing is believing. If you don't see it, you think of it as this is magic, this is juju. And even for my, my, my um, staff, like for them, they're not even staff, they were, we're a team because for them, they came on board not having any experience and not thinking that they could do this because what they thought agriculture, they felt very demoralized that I'm, you know, it's better to have a job in the city, even if it's just a cleaner, than to be a farmer for some of them. They can go back to their village and do that. Or many of them left their villages doing nothing. Like they wouldn't want to be seen as a farmer. But now it's empowering to say, I'm in agriculture. Some of them call it, I'm a tech farmer. Or I'm a this, I'm a that. They feel proud. And so for them, it's been experiential learning. Seeing is believing. So when I tell them, OK, um, this is how we're going to plant. This is how we're going to um, um, transplant and everything like that, they're kind of confused because they literally sit at a desk they take their rock wall, they put the seeds in, and then they transfer the seeds once they come up for seedlings into the pods, and they press a button, and it turns on the pump, and it turns on the lights, and that's it, you know? And so for them, it's, it's something that they never would have imagined, but now so they also train people because we have an urban farmers network, and so they, with secondary school and below, are training people with masters on what hydroponic farming is, why urban farming is important, and there's a confidence that they have with that. So that's really that's something that I love, and I, I feel happy that they are totally different from not being able to look you in the eye. They have a confidence they can look you in the eye. They have a confidence of themselves. Before they didn't have IDs, they have IDs now. Before they didn't have bank accounts, they have bank accounts now, and they feel they can walk into places that they couldn't walk into before. So Excuse me. No, it's okay. <laughs> put that over here. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> um, so, um, how, so how many people does, um, does your organization impact? So we have 10 direct staff. Those are the staff that are on the farm all the time. There are tech farmers, in mm. a sense. But then we have 59 um, part-time staff that are part of the fabrication and design process. So they come in, let's say, um, once a month and they work on specific aspects of the development process. So we have guys that help us to source our containers. We use um, like abandoned containers and um, containers that were like maybe too old for um, companies to continue to use. We get them at either free or you know affordable prices. Then we have guys who maybe have been artisans um, and they had experience maybe in plumbing but they don't have a job or electrical but they don't have a job and so we train them on each aspect and we kind of do an assembly line so every time we bring a new container on board which is like now it's been like every month they have they know they're getting extra money in their pocket so so there are there are part-time team but full-time we have 10 employees so and um, but you also mentioned earlier the uh, the sort of training program that you have as yes, well so yes. I mean that, that must that's reach for a considerable... Abuja wide um, the urban farmers network we have over um, 90 people so far they have come onto the um, network and so we do um, training on how to maximize um, agriculture and urban spaces um, how to do spin farming small plot intensive spin farming What's yes it? it's <laughs> called small plot intensive um, farming so what you do is you maximize the small amount of space that you have. So it's not necessarily the type of farming that we're doing um, in terms of the hydroponic farming, but in a tight space, how can you make the most of what's there so people can do things in their house? We really just want to green Abuja. And so people become more conscious about what it is that they eat. They're looking for more hyper-local food. We're getting people who in the future may also be able to come on board and grow with us. And so our goal long-term is to be able to say, okay, I want to be able to partner with a bank and say, okay, please, you may not be able to give a loan to this person on their own. I am the guarantor. I want to be the person that stands for them because they, if they get a loan to have a container for themselves, they're no longer working for me, they're working with me, mm -hmm. and they're able to then grow, and I will be able to just help them to find the market. So as I'm scaling, they're scaling, and we're all kind of making money together. So that's, that's the goal I see for Fresh Direct, but then I also see in Nigeria, people being more conscious about what they eat, um, people being more um, conscious about where their food is coming from, um, and then people being conscious about the impact that agriculture has on the environment. Yes, you, so, you mentioned earlier deforestation. Yeah. And yeah, and not just that, like when you're flying your food in, think about the carbon footprint that that small bag of salad mix has when it's coming all the way from the United States or um, maybe um, Dubai or something like that, compared to if it's coming just from around the corner. Mm. So. So those are things that we need to think about. Mm. I think with the, 
Can we take some questions from the from the floor? Mm -hmm. Can we have the can we have the, the, the handheld microphones, please? Is the lady here? Hi, I'm Siobhan Cassidy from the African News Agency. Angel, I'd like to ask you, what is the, how has the business and agricultural community received you? Have you received support from, from organizations? And Okay, well, I mean, in terms of the agricultural community, I think they've been very open about what I'm doing. I get a lot of requests to um, let people understand how hydroponic farming can help in Nigeria, and hydroponic farming is starting to become more popular in Nigeria. Um, uh, but people don't understand the concept of vertical farming and how even though you're doing hydroponic farming, it's not, you can in, in, improve the efficiency and you can actually maximize the yield when you focus on vertical farming using hydroponic technology. Um, I'm part of a group called Agro Nigeria and a few other um, agrit groups. And so we all kind of have our niche, but there's a good amount of... Um, um, camaraderie amongst us so if they have any questions they come to me so yeah I think a lot of people ask how can they be involved how can they do this it's been great in terms of the um, <laughs> ministries um, it's quite interesting I, I um, wanted to register my technology and I also wanted the ministry to know what it is that we we're doing and they were like oh this is a wonderful project and then later on I was told that they may be working with a Dutch company to bring that technology in, and it was so painful. Um, and uh, I met another person in the ministry, and they were like, yeah, we'd love to come and see your space. And I was like, no, absolutely not. I'm, I'm, I hate government, blah, blah, blah. But you know, I, I don't hate government. I think that they're beneficial in certain ways. But me having that visceral reaction, the person looked into it, and then they stopped. And so imagine, though, if I didn't have that opportunity to air my grievances, um, then I would have been just brought, put out of business before I even get a chance to scale to a point where I can compete, you know, and so um, I think competition is great. I don't mind competition, but let indigenous players at least have a little bit of a start, you know, when we have less resources, when other people have 1% interest rates and we have 25% interest rates, give us a chance to just try to compete, you know, so, so those are some of the experiences that I've had. Other than that, um, I've also had a benefit of working with um, people in my sector outside of the country. So um, this whole urban farming initiative is a global thing. So I can relate to someone in New York and in London and in Washington DC and Chicago and we have Skype sessions or when I travel, I get to visit their spaces and I've told them, well, if you ever come to Nigeria, come and see mine. I hope they do. <laughs> but um, there is um, a, like a brotherhood, sisterhood um, of organic, urban farmers that's that's also been helpful to me because there's some things that I haven't been able to learn from peers around me because they're not really peers around me that I've been able to learn from my friends digitally so yeah it's been good I think we have time for one or two more questions um, microphones over here please Bo both gentlemen I think hi I'm uh, Nicholas Chambeau Radio France International uh, could you uh, explain again, like you would for a five-year-old, the technical side of things in terms of the piling up of the containers, how it involves perhaps less light getting in, and also the hydro aspect of your, uh, of your okay. technique? Thanks. Okay. So Sorry. I'm no, that's fine. Um, in terms of uh, the technology, I mean, we tend to look at plants and say, oh, plants need soil. Plants need this, plants need that, but they actually don't. Um, if we remember back to our basic like high school biology, we say, what is it that plants need? They need light, they need water, and they need soil. But in the soil, they actually need the nutrients. So they need um, potassium, they need nitrogen, they need um, uh, phosphorus, um, and then they also need other minerals. Um, so what we do um, is we take soil, we compost, we, we, we take manure, we take soil, we take other things and we compost it. And then we, just like how a human would eat a fruit salad versus drink a fruit smoothie, we are taking the soil, which is like the salad for the plant, and we're turning it into a smoothie, a liquefied version. And so in our first set of containers, that's what we were doing. Um, but now we realize that if you create an ecosystem for the plants, you don't need to do that. And so we've decided fish 
we've used fish. So we have fish ponds that feed to the containers. So the waste from the fish are what bring the nutrients for the plants. And so the bacteria in the water help to convert the waste from the fish into fertilizer, just like how you would compost, just like how it breaks down in compost. And so the plants suck that in. And so for our system, it really is, um, in each container we have um, five levels. And in the new version of our containers, we're gonna have the fish tank inside instead of um, outside so that it really is um, more modular than it is now because of the fish tanks being external. Um, and so in that space, you're able to get about um, eight or 900 plants on every level. Um, and then uh, when you take one container, because shipping containers are built in such a way where they are stackable. And for us, regulation says that full containers are allowed to be stacked eight stories high, um, but we say just five. And so in our master plan for every space, we have, a, we have a thousand square meter plot. That space can take about 100 containers. So our goal is to scale now from these 10 to 100 containers in that in that space. So you take that 100 and multiply it by 4,000 plants, <laughs> you know, every month. It's, it's something big. And uh, we're not just doing veg, we're also doing fodder, we're also, which is very good because um, in Nigeria, fodder is like what we feed um, cows and goats and uh, pigs and things like that. It's good for us because we have issues of land management with herdsmen and farmers. And so the herdsmen seem to enter the farms and um, eat the crops. And so this can be an opportunity for ranching system to take hold in Nigeria more than um, it has because then herdsmen will be able to feed their cows without looking for new grasses and kind of causing um, ethnic and, um, and uh, regional conflicts based on the access to resources. Um, and then we also do more exotic things like microgreens. And so the chefs really like that. So we invite chefs from different places to our space and they come and they taste and they like it, you know. So we, 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 it's a fun you know, process for them to see how it grows and then for them to taste it and, and affirm the quality and, and then for us, them to tell us the other things that they would like us to grow. So it's quite interesting, yeah, thanks. I think we have time for one, uh, one more very quick question, and I think you are, um, because we're running out of time, but you are available for interviews afterwards. Oh, definitely. So if, if you haven't got your question in, then... Thank you. My name is Simbala Shimoyo. I'm a global shaper from Harare Hub, Zimbabwe. Congratulations on the innovation. I'd love to know how Thank scalable you. it is to other countries as a means for food security, or ensuring food security. That's a really good question. Oh, it's a very yeah. good question. On Thank scalability, you. yes. Um, for us, um, I wouldn't be in this business if I didn't see the ability for this to scale. Um, we're based in Abuja, and we're about to open a Lagos facility as well. We, we have two facilities now in Abuja. Um, the second facility is a, is a, um, is a license, it's a um, franchise partnership. So that person is in partnership with us, and we're managing the space, but we partially own the the business that's going there and then it's operating under our name so as we're scaling they're scaling um lagos is the next opportunity for us we see it as the biggest market in nigeria and so we want to be there it has the most amount of tourism the most amount of nightlife um, and people who tend to prefer these types of veggies more it really is a niche market because we the types of things that we're growing are not the staple products that locals use it's really for um, the top 20 percent of the population but even at that it is um, more than enough for us to capture the market we're looking at other cities like ghana nairobi but we, we we want to find cities that have a similar issue as we do where they have issues of importing and so if those cities have issues of importing it means that we have a solution for them so yeah Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all we have time for, but um, thank you we can, very much. We can, um, people can have interviews with you afterwards. All right. Thank, thank you. you for having me. <laughs> no, it's a pleasure. Thank you.